All right, so where did this one start from? This whole project actually started from my girlfriend, Gabrielle, really, really, really wanted to go to Hawaii. That's where I, I recall something I saw on YouTube about a year ago. And it was the video of Tyler, the vegan cyclist with Jeremiah. When they came to Hawaii, they went to Big Island and they did that impossible route video. I felt like, hey, how impossible is the impossible route? And that's how this big project started. Finally, the preparation for our big challenge. And right now, we're in the garage of our buddy, our guide, Chris. And we need to tune up our bikes, we need to clean the bikes. Hopefully, everything goes well tomorrow because this challenge will be quite difficult. So I started to dismount my bike packing gear of the bike. I started to swap the tires for proper Pirelli tires that I got from HLC in 40s. These are the H, I absolutely love those tires. I've been rocking them the whole season. Started to clean the bike, real oil the bike, just make sure everything's on point. Shifting good. Light. Ready for a big day. I'm Chris DeMarkey. I run Hawaii Epic Cycling. Married, turned 50 years old today. Started racing, uh, was 18 years old. Big time mountain biking, raced for Alpine Stars. Quickly transferred into the road cycling scene. Have been on some pretty big teams throughout my career. Currently race for Monster Racing. I've won national championships seven times. I've placed uh, seventh at world championships, road race in Austria. But now it's, it, for me, it's all about do the epic cycling and make people's dreams come true and provide a, just a whole different level for people to see what, it, what can be done on a bicycle. So for those who don't know me, my name is Charles Wimet. I am a former professional downhill skateboarder. I used to race on the World Cup for a few years. And now I turn to a full-time cycling YouTuber. Uh, basically, I am able to do projects like this because you guys watch the content that I produce. This video will be our experience from the preparation to the dinner, to the strategy, to waking up, to the start of the ride at the sea level and all the way till we finish at the top of the Manuaki Volcano, which is at 4,200 meters of elevation, which is quite high. And so many problems happen throughout the day. Wet or dry to? Uh, for tomorrow, it really is not gonna matter. I prefer wet. Cause it might be raining at some point, yeah, right? Yeah, we're probably gonna get stuck in some 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 rain. I'd go with the wet loop for tomorrow. What PSI should I run? Uh, well, we'll check them in the morning. I throw in like 40 right now. 40? You know, we might start at 50 and then drop down to 40. We're not gonna drop down really below that because you'll bottom out rocks. Got it. Perfect. You'll see it with our gear in the last two miles, yeah. you're going to be in the 30 to 40s. When you come off the dirt back onto the road, yeah. it's it's wicked steep right there. I think it's around 22, 23 oh, percent. Okay. But also at 13,000. Yeah. Yes. The feet. And, and that's where you'll see your power numbers. Cool. Uh, when Charles reached out to me, um, obviously the impossible route uh, is uh, not a lot of people reach out to me. Most people that do reach out to me about it, 99% of the time, after they see what it's about, usually just back out. It's very few people, five to say exact, who've said, no, let's do it. And even if I've tried to talk them out of it because it really is that difficult, uh, they, no, nah, I'm still going to do it. And this is so exciting. We're getting there. We're almost 12 hours away from the start of the challenge. The night will be long, it will be stressful, but I'm confident, I'm really confident. Chris is, I have the best guy with me, if you guys don't know. This guy has done it all. So now I just need to okay. hold his wheel. Okay. All righty. All right, Chris, so 
we were just briefly talking about you doing guided tours for your clients. You said not much of them finish? Yeah, I'd say on the big hard climbs, your Mauna Kea or, uh, climb, I would say only about 30% finish. You know, they can go out and maybe train to ride six or eight hours, but it's they have reprieve during that time. When you're riding for eight to nine hours on Mauna Kea, you're climbing the entire time. There's a total of 670 feet of downhill for the entire day, and it's probably less than three minutes of rest. So outside of that, you encounter everything from altitude sickness to just being on your bike for nine hours to saddle sores to hot spots on your feet. You know, everything really comes into play on these really epic long climbs. So the impossible route, I attempt it with three, with five clients and none of them finished it, right? Yeah, none of them finished. Uh, I had a client get real close, uh, 1.8 miles from the top. No matter what, we could have sat there for a half hour and eaten sandwiches and taken breaks and just rested, but his feet were done, his legs were done, his altitude sickness was kicking in. Uh, he just wasn't gonna take another pedal stroke. But uh, he got an A for effort, I'll tell you that, man. He gave it everything he had. So I've never really gone out and tried to just hammer it out. So t I'm really looking forward to tomorrow with same pace, less, less stops. Awkward. Yeah. You trust me, I'll guide us through the hard parts and, and rest us during the easier parts. What is easy? Last 12 miles is going to take us as long as the first 50. It, you're all in the last 12 miles. You're, you're all in. If we time it right, we'll get up there and the sun will be dropping across the ocean. It'll be amazing. Woo! Cannot wait. All right, guys, so an uh, obligatory stop before doing a big challenge like that is the grocery store. So we'll fuel up on sandwiches. Let's see what they got. All right, man, we just found the best sandwich out there. So <laughs> look at this. It's already sliced. So when we're, when we're riding, like, we don't want to eat something like a full sandwich, but more smaller bites. So we'll take two of those for breakfast. It gotta be oats. 10 packs should be fine for everyone. All right, what I love about being in a project like that is uh, basically we have budget for food, so I can just be like, woo! <laughs> anything I want, anything I feel will be great for, uh, for the challenge. I just toss it in and it's awesome. Look at that sunset, man. Tomorrow about this time, we should be on top. We're gonna see that beautiful sunset. Good, so we got one turkey, one beef. We're good. We got uh, Coke, we got uh, oats for breakfast. Cool, perfect. We got have uh, muffins, oranges, bagels, muffins, some ice. chips, some ice. Ice in the cooler. All right, so guys, now we're gonna head out to the restaurant. We got a driver waiting for us. Yeah. We got a table. Hey, it's called Fish and the Hog. So fish it's hog. Uh, fish and barbecue, and they'll have uh, some pasta, some salads. That's what we're gonna go for, huh? Yeah, it's right. good stuff. Jump in the car. Maybe every 45 minutes to an hour, you know, uh, on the side of the road, giving us a bottle. And by the way, guys, we haven't introduced you, but this is Dan. This is our driver. Dan is super experienced uh, driving. How many times you went up to the volcano? Uh, I've gone like three, four times, yeah. All right, guys, carb loading. No better meal than this. <laughs> My man Chris got the same. Brisket the same linguine. Missing. The best Waimea has off. <laughs> After the dinner, we head out to the Airbnb and I booked the Airbnb. And my God, I kind of regret that Airbnb. <laughs> it was 15 minutes from the start of the road and I thought it was a good idea to be that close. Is that the frog? Is that one? Yep. See, go, key. Go, key. Not this one. <laughs> Three grown men, one girl into this single bedroom studio with a pull-out couch. Chris was a bit, not a shame, but I don't have the right word. He is in his 50s. He made it in life. He looks like he has good money and he ended up in this subpar Airbnb that was still like $200 a night. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my crib. MTV's hottest Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a pull-up couch. This thing is worth millions. And uh, this bed here, um, highest quality Italian fabric. <laughs> Same with a built-in bike rack and sink all in one. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Just, I haven't found the restroom nor the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in there. It's shared. I think it's on the right. All right, so I've tried some of these samples. I really like them, and they, these guys wanted to partner up with us for this challenge. So we got, uh, so this brand is called Salt Stick, uh, and these are small electrolytes chewables. You take like one every half hour. I think I'll be eating a lot of those. Have you ever tried those? Have yeah, you heard yeah, of this brand? Good brand. These are Joje bars. So these are more like uh, consistent bars. So we'll be able to um, fill, like eat maybe like one an hour. It's good having one right now. Dessert, baby. Yeah, I'm grabbing one too. Plus I'm fueling for tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good. Pancakes and bacon. Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm here using my Aero Fit training for uh, altitude and uh, the Mauna Kea climb, the impossible climb we're doing tomorrow. I have uh, gone through the mobile app and done some of the cool stuff. Um, one of my strengths is uh, I holding 7.2 liters of oxygen now. 7.2? Yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's big. Today, like, I'm just gonna do inhale strength. Very cool product, and I'm interested what it will do for me with not only my cycling, what it can do for ver ver sea level versus uh, altitude, but also with my running and really my swimming. So we'll see what levels I can get to, and right now, I've only been new using it a week, and I've already seen little gains, and I'm only on the beginning levels really like it it reminds you every day to pick it up and use it so it's cool i just keep it right by the uh, tv remote really and when i sit down and it in the evening usually uh i'll typically do the little workout and then chill but awesome product thank you Next morning we wake up and then that's where we start to eat uh, for our breakfast. Obviously we had oats, we had orange juice. Just try to fill up as much food as possible in the morning because whew, it was the biggest day in my life basically. All right. So yeah, 5'10". I'm rocking the limited edition, not going pro jersey. <laughs> With the sad and happy face. All right, so as of right now, uh, it's still, Super dark. We have about 15 minute drive to the start line, so super excited there. And then as we drove, we got to Wapita Valley, and boy, I wasn't ready for that. Wapita Valley is the steepest paved road in America. It's about a mile long, 23% average gradient. Welcome to the impossible climb. Never seen a road this steep in my life. Yeah, they ripped the road because it'd be too slippery. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's awesome. Wow. Oh, wow. Holy shit. And we're still high, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a mild climb. And then Chris was like, yeah, yeah, just wait a second. It's getting even worse. And then it gets worse. And then he said, oh wait, Charles, it's gonna get even worse. And then it get even worse. And there was those pitches at 32%. Getting down to one of the most beautiful beaches of all Hawaii, Black Sand Beach. With a sunrise, it's gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> and then we get to climb out on our bicycles. This is the steepest part coming up. I think it's 34%. 34%? Holy shit! Stay as focused as you can. You're, you're gonna be fully anaerobic. So when it does level for a second, yep. like grab some heartbeats back. You yeah. pretty much just have to kind of power through it. I mean, that's what that's what makes it so unique is you, you're starting the first mile and you're full anaerobic when you don't want to, be, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but that's what I'm saying. Where it does go from, you know, 15, 20% back down to like six or seven. Yeah. So you catch, know, catch a breath there. Catch a breath, yeah. Um, because you're going to get another steep steep part but then once we get to the top you know phase one is over and we can settle in on mud lane yeah, yeah. i was stressed and i realized that sh what the fuck did i put myself into so got to the bottom and we reach the most beautiful beach i ever saw with sunrise the sand so soft that's how tyler told me this place is magical You've never gonna see it, something like that in your whole life, and I can vouch for that. Man, I've 
I rarely have never seen a road this steep. It's going to be crazy, but confident. But now, first of all, I gotta brush our teeth, man. <laughs> I ate some oats, and now my mouth is all dry. As um, and then just give me a full one. And then in this bag, I have some bars, and I have some sunscreen if you need some. And I'm gonna carry some bars with me. Joe J, carry two of those, and start with one bottle. I'm so grateful for life to be here at the moment. I'm about to ride my bike up the steepest road in America, the, the most challenging gravel course in the whole world. Today is about 65 miles, 17,200 feet, all on gravel bikes. About 93% uh, of it is all gonna be on dirt. So uh, stay tuned, stay tuned. Aloha. Okay, it's time to go. There you go, grab your bike. Let's go dip our front wheel into the water. Front wheel. Let's Let get started, outfit. man. The views, the beach, the sound of the, wa the waves. It's a magical moment. Halfway up the climb, it opens up a little bit. We'll stay to the right when it gets steep. You guys pass us quickly. Yeah. Because we, we're going to need the road. And then you can get some of us from the back. Mm. Okay. As the crew rose, getting ready, Chris and I start to walk towards the ocean. Just as before we dip our front wheel into the water, Chris turned to me, put her hands on me, and said, Charles, do you believe in God? <laughs> like, such American such thing to say. My response was, I usually don't, but today I do. <laughs> and he said, cool, because you're going to need it. When all the doubts start to hit me, as we're on the sand, about to start riding, I'm, I lost all my confidence right there. I didn't show it to anyone. I didn't show it to the camera. I didn't show it to my girlfriend, Chris. But boy, oh boy, on the inside. That was definitely a, a rough time. Next wave, we're dipping the wheel. Start to go through that little trail that we drove by, and as we got to that first urban where where it finally got steep for the first time, and then we start climbing, and right away I am grinding my 3242 teeth. Starting my PO, you're out of the gun at 20 to 30 percent climb. That's just like wow. Are you kidding me? Like I'm supposed to be saving my legs and I'm fully anaerobic for the first 12 minutes of this ride. You know, and I said this during during the ride uh, to Charles is it's all about the pace, section by section. Don't overdo it. Do exactly what is necessary because you're gonna need it later. How's it, brother? <laughs> Oh man, that wall. It's gonna get worse right here, okay? Okay. Yeah. Just get your heart rate and, and check. And every stroke I was doing, I was literally stopping. So one stroke stopping, one stroke stopping. Because it was just so slow and it took everything I had to just stay balanced on the bike. I did not want to walk this. I didn't I, I had to keep going. I had to do it. So we finally passed that little steeper section and then another steeper section and then a little bit of rest steeper section a little bit of rest steeper section
That's it. And just like that, just grinded the whole way through and we reached the top of that first climb. The hardest 2.3 kilometer I ever done in my life. <laughs> we decided to have an alternate route and I struggled with this for a long time. And, and the route is only different by literally about 200 meters. But the route that Tyler chose was because I think he thought that was his only option at the time and you had to hop a fence, you had to go through private land, you had to hop around another fence through a, a gulch, and then frustrating that you had to kind of bushwhack your way through cane grass, when in fact there was a better way. And yes, we still had a hike a bike section. Four by fours are creating, this might be rideable, but even so, it's much more enjoyable. And I've done the cane grass bushwhack uh, in dry conditions, and I've done it in the pouring rain conditions. And really, it's just not fun either way. So if we can really make this the true impossible route where technically you would never have to dismount your bike, you know, unless it's for a hike a bike section, not for anything else and you're respecting the land, you're not hopping into people's private property, then I think we could get hundreds if not thousands of people over the decades to come here and try this route and really make something of it. Fell to the jungle. Really weird roads with four wheelers, track, always in a steep gradient. Constant climb, non stop. It was so technical at that point because I had just to keep looking where I want to go, try to avoid rocks, go around it, uh, go through this little dimple there. And just like that, we just push our way through. Now, finally, I'm some smoother gravel. It's great, Chris. Yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, we're on the top of Mud Lane. We got about two miles to go before Mama Loa Highway. Then we're back on Mono Road for 44 miles. But it's been good. Proud of Charles here. He conquered White Peel like a stud. I'm uh, the only one who, in, in the five guesses that he brought to that White Peel Valley, that finished it without walking. So, you're getting a JoJ bar? I am. Pancakes and bacon. Sun rising right now. Man, the view. Look how lucky we are, man. Those big ass trees. Beauty, the smells. Oh yeah. The eucalyptus, the flowers. It's amazing, absolutely. As we were about to finish this road, the mud lane, back on pavement actually, and then we got into this road where the trees on both sides were so high, the sun was rising up and it was just beaming light rays to the road, to us, and we looked there and it was just so beautiful, the street was amazing. And then we turned to the highway, was uh, maybe f five kilometers. Do you see what happened, Chris? Uh, did that, a cooler in the middle of the road? 
Well, I think that was our cooler. No. Yep. No. You sure? Positive. 100%? 100%. Because I, I saw they did a U-turn. No. They were facing us. No. And then I saw the cooler on the ground. Oh, no. For real? I... <laughs> That's not good. That has all of our drinks in it. Please say no. <laughs> you want me to call Dan? Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. We're on Mono Road. Okay, so everything's good. That wasn't our cooler in the middle of the road. Okay, good. I didn't think so. Okay, cool. Well, catch up to us when you can. All right, bye. Better. It wasn't our cooler. Julian hopped out and they didn't realize it and they left him. <laughs> they had to go back and get him. <laughs> Man, that's so funny. <laughs> he got left out. So we hit a headwind on Mono Road that was very unexpected. As soon as we turned off of Mamaloa Highway um, onto Mono Road, uh, I looked at Charles and was like, okay, like this is, we're gonna have this for probably about 10 miles. And we had it, and then when, as we rounded the corner where I expected us to kind of get a tailwind, uh, it got worse and it got way worse. So this road is, a lot more easier than what we had down there. And we just go easy because where we need all the power and their energy is at the top. So I'll follow Chris's advice and not blow myself down here. So when I started wrapping my head around uh, doing this impossible climb for a second time, knowing that my chances of finishing were probably gonna be close to 100% because I was doing it with Charles, you just wrap your head around it. It's all about pace. It's all about nutrition. Definitely can't do it without your guys' support, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for driving. Yeah. Fucking appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome, man. Another big day on the bike. So what are you up to, Charles? And uh, gotta get all the water out. You got a bottle for me? I'll take one too. Yeah, feel good. Two, two and a half hours in, almost at 5,000 feet of climbing. All right, that truck's gotta go ahead. I'm done right. with the dust. Just a little bit more so we're not dusty. Feeling confident about the climb? Yeah, so far it's it's great. The legs feels good. No pain nowhere. Just turning the pedals for all this time, so it should be fine. I hope. That's 11% right now. It's grinding the smallest gear. Yeah, let them pass you. We are three hours and 40 minutes of ride time into the ride. We've covered almost half of the miles. We just wow. went over 200 feet over a third of the climbing. That's so that means that the next half of the miles is gonna be double the climbing we just did. And that's gonna be where now we, are, we have this unexpected, probably 15 mile an hour headwind. And uh, we've been battling it for about six miles and we're probably gonna battle it for about 10 before we get to turn and hopefully we'll get a have a tailwind. We'll see what uh, if it's guarded or not. And so I knew at that point, you know, yeah, you know, Charles hired me to make sure he was going to accomplish his goal. At least I could help him any way I could. I basically just sat in the headwind, pounded about 300 watts for quite a while. Um, we had about 32 miles to go on Mono Road. And I would say for a good 15 of that, we were pounded into some pretty good winds and a uh, little unexpected. You know, I'm always looking at the glass half full and now I'm like, wow, if we, if we do it again and there are no winds, we could probably beat our own record by 30, 40 minutes. That turkey sandwich just sits at the right place right now. Yeah. Oh man, I've been craving food. Like, bars is okay, bars is great, but nothing beats a 
A big sandwich. Yep. So, in a little bit, this ranch style is going to end. We're going to get back in the deep woods. Julian, this is arguably the hardest thing I've done in my life. I'm kind of scared of the one third of the elevation length. Mono Road was the longest, steepest, most difficult gravel road. It took us five and a half hours of struggling. The descents were the worst thing I experienced. We were going fast on technical gravel with big rocks and loose gravel into corners. And I, I, I don't have mountain bike background. It was literally shaking my old body for 30 seconds and then up, steep up, and then back down. Just trying to survive and trying to just get to the next hill, pass it, and then a bit of downhill, and then pass it, and then just like that for five hours of rough terrain, it just killed my back, it killed my arms, my hands, the vibration was unbelievable. I had some problems with my GoPro, the vibration was so hard that the GoPro was always like tilting down, and then I was just trying to tilt it up and tilt it down. And I look on my GPS and I see there's 26k left of this before we get back to the main road. I almost lost it there. I was I was so pissed. When is this gonna end? It's taking so long. I just needed to be into a new environment because I was sick of this road. Uh, so really this is where we're gonna get our last reprieve here. We're gonna have a climb and then we're gonna have some up and down on Mono Road. You gotta save as much energy of the next 10 miles as possible. The 12 after that, we're gonna do as much climbing in that 12 miles as we literally are doing for the first uh, probably 50. It's gonna be something else, but we're ready for it. I'm glad that uh, we're done with the hard part of Mona. I'd rather have steep elevation than rocky, loosey, terrain like that. I, yeah, that, I feel for me, it's, this it is, takes, so yeah. much more energy on my body than All right, this, smooth climb. This, this part of Mana is, is, again, it's just another dimension of what makes the impossible climb. You know, what it gives it its name. It's this brutal four by four, rocky, nasty, full focus, places that you don't want to use any upper body, you're using all upper body. The arms work as well, almost as much. Are you having fun though? Good. I'm having a blast. <laughs> Best day of my life. Has it been hard driving? A couple gnarly sections, but we, we we're making it through. Not too bad. You're impressed with the little Chevy? Dude, the little Chevy Colorado. It's a great <laughs> truck. It really is. I'm the yellow bar. Look at this. <laughs> it does match. Woo. I got the right color. And dude, look at this. It says, go for gold, man. I'm all about going for gold. Would I get a medal on top, Chris? What about metal? To give to your clients. Oh, you know what I thought about doing actually, instead of medals, mm -hmm. I thought about making like a big trophy, mm -hmm. like a badass I conquered Mauna Kea, I yeah, conquered. Dude, should, yeah. And if they do, they get a pl their name placard oh, on cool. it. And yeah. then they get pictures with the trophy. We carry it with us to the top. They can hold it, you know? And yeah. then whoever makes the trophy, if they want to make their own duplicate, they can, but they'll be on the world famous. Yeah, impossible dude. climb trophy in that. fact why don't we just start it with our names oh yeah Go. let's do that we're gonna make a just this ginormous <laughs> gaudy big yeah. trophy that will hold like 200 dude. names over the years i'll come back to a wire just to have my photo on it yeah all right so we're just about to get back on the bike and i've i've seen chris's saddle what the f is this <laughs> this is full on i know isn't it rad it's super comfy rad it is comfortable. 
Really? Yeah, it just, it molds to your ass. How's your bib treating you today? Bibs are awesome, man. They did a really nice job with these. They're comfortable. I love they the, fit the oversized gripper. It's... Yeah, it's, it's really good. Fits the tan line. <laughs> All right, let's get back okay. on the bike. Should we put some uh, some oil in the, the chain or it's we think it's fine? Probably, actually. Yeah, a little bit, let's do it. Struggling, but at least it's not slippery that much. We only have a couple of k's to go and then it's lunchtime. But now at least we have a tailwind. The funny thing is, you can ask my girlfriend Gabrielle, I fart a lot. I did pull a big fart and Chris smelled that. <laughs> so the good news is we have tailwind. The bad news is you got to experience everything that Gab does every day. Feel good, just grinding it out. So getting a little chilly. Yeah. I have to say it feels about 50. We're at uh, about 7,500 feet altitude. Not really feeling that yet, but we're gonna climb 7,000 feet here real, real quick in 12 miles. I love the fact that we're struggling hard and Julian's just walking casually. <laughs> and at some point it was there was this teasing part, like you would see pavement, you're stoked, oh, pavement's there. Pavement lasts for like three meters. And did that for a couple times. And we have some pavement here. Boom. Yeah. Hey. Finally pavement. Dude, descents on pavement. So easy compared to what we just done. I know. <laughs> Smooth. It feels like we're riding on butter. What? Good. Well, that feels good. And then we finally made our turn onto the Monterey Road, which was paved. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Whew. Well done, dude. Chris is smoking me on the descents. <laughs> now it's time for a sandwich. Scrumptious. Best sandwich ever. Mm. As far as I'm concerned now, this is, I mean, I've done this part probably 10 times, 15 times, I don't even know. And it's, it's all about focus, mental focus, and don't go too deep. Too deep? If you go too deep, you're gonna unclip and you're just gonna sit there. Yep. And then you're gonna try to remount and then you're gonna go too deep. Mm -hmm. If you and I can do a talking pace, and I don't know what the winds are doing right now, but it's not good for us. When you come off a of mono road, it's where everything begins. But I think at that point, we have logged somewhere around 52 to 54 miles. But as soon as you get onto Mauna Kea, you're looking at 12 miles and you're looking at between 20 minutes and 26 minutes per mile is going to be your time. So you travel three miles and it takes you roughly an hour and then you have nine more miles to go. You really just have to stay focused. It's just steady Eddie, because um, everything now comes into play, okay? Hot spots on your feet, your arms are tired. You're gonna hit out where, we're gonna start hitting altitude right now. We're at like 7,500, we're climbing to 14. The nicest part right now is it's not gonna beat us up so much anymore. Mm -hmm. We're off the gravel for a minute. Yep. So we're gonna have about uh, a couple miles to the gravel and then four miles of gravel and then a couple miles to the top. Cool. We start to go up the Mononoke Volcano and I'm doing good. I'm doing really good.
give inspiration to all the dudes that are 190 pounds. <laughs> Flying at 17,000 feet. You're a monster, dude. So my jersey says, you know, it's all about giving other people inspiration to get out there and do this. Get off the couch. Believe what the body can do. If the body can't do it, the mind certainly can. Chris, I think you're now my biggest life inspiration. If I can be just like you when I'm 50, I'll achieve life. That's right. Realizing that if they can do this, everything else is easy. Oh yeah, that's true. So talk to me, how different is this than ever skiing? This is really different than my resting. Long, sustained effort. Everything was a lot of go hard and chill, go hard and chill. So far, I'd say this is harder, but we'll see on the top if this changed. But come on, Dan, you know you want to get on this bike. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> so salt stick feels good. No cramps yet, so I'll keep eating one, one every 20 minutes. I just went over, I burned 5,100 calories for the day. Wait till I go home and have sex with my gorgeous, beautiful wife. I'm gonna pop in another five or 600. <laughs> so the cadence is so low right now and it's gonna get even lower. And I am on my smallest gear. I'm running a 31.42. And I got a 32.42. Okay, soon I have a number two to do. Hello. I'll try to hold it to the visitor center, but if I can't, it'll be in the bushes. <laughs> Hopefully we find that. In I'm not kidding. Thank you for the info. You gotta be real, eh? You gotta be raw. <laughs> you gotta be raw. You gotta be real. <laughs> Keep it real. Wait, right. regarde la, la, la plante comme celle-là, la, la petite. Ah ouais. Comme ça, là. La petite verte, là. Ouais, c'est vraiment fluffy, là, les fleurs. Ramassez mon exemple parce que ça pousse, là. <laughs> <laughs> go, okay. grab me, go grab me some Indian toilet paper, man. Yeah. Because I'll need it. It's velvet, man. Take me a bouquet there. Yeah. It'll be the most beautiful bouquet you ever gave me. Yeah. Oh my god. It's gonna feel so good on his ass. I hope that stuff's the same. It better <laughs> not be some like. I'm not like 100%. Can I get out? Yeah. I'm not like a botanist. I'm just some guy. I think he's gonna have enough. That's How much? A fluffy thing. I really hope he doesn't have to use that because I'm not 100% on that one. But maybe it'll be good. It'll either feel really good or it'll have a bad rash. <laughs> oh, there's a visitor to center. He's, oh, he's gonna be oh, fine. Oh, he'll be good. He's gonna be just fine. You got to see. And now we have a little souvenir. And then as we reach that visitor center, you see this porta potty jump in it. And I did what I had to do. Ah. All right, so now we're at the visitor center, as you can see. Not much interesting to see, other than a boring gift shop. Now, it's the toughest gravel section of the day, according to Chris. He say we will be slammed at the end of it. 4.2 miles of gravel and... Uh, Steep. So far, I've been with people who have attempted this over 15 times, and the one section I've made it through only one time without walking. Every other time, it's uh, there's this one like 200 meter section that just turns you inside out. And, but they just redid the road. Cross our fingers, maybe we got a little hard pack. But if we don't, it's just part of the impossible climb. And then we'll get off that and hit four more miles of steep road, of paper boy. So the gravel section is all about starting super easy talking pace, doing only what is necessary because we're going to need everything we have for the last mile of the gravel section. Definitely looking forward for it. My mindset is good right now. Yeah. Do my mall in. The head is good. The knees are good. Feet feel great. I remold my shoes right before coming here. They fit perfectly. Now just putting in the work. So at that visitor center, I was feeling good, but that gravel part that was upon us was scary. We got told when we scouted there that they redid the road, they re-leveled it about a week ago, which was at first good news. Turns out it wasn't, it wasn't good news because as soon as we get onto the gravel part, it was so loose gravel that we, we just kept spinning because it was just so soft. It was, the, it was so soft with the wind pushing us from side to side or into the face. 
all my energy all, and all my concentration to just stay on the bike. Going as slow as long as possible. Plus, we have a headwind right now. We're like, where's, where's the crew? And we saw all the way down to the visitor center and our car was still there. So that's when Chris had a missing call from Dan, our driver, and he called back. We were wondering where the super vehicle would be and we get a view and they're still at the visitor center. Hey, what's happening? No flipping way. They won't let them through. Why? Dude, we can't do it without you guys. Well, I have a I have a microfiber towel in my bag in the back in that black and white bag. I mean, could you wipe the truck down? Use a jug of water. Just try. We're going to keep trekking, but if you guys can't get through, we'll we'll somehow manage. But uh do I mean, it would be so much better if you guys were with us. Our whole challenge was jeopardized by this ranger who wouldn't let our support car go. We didn't know if they would have made it. So we prepare for the worst. So they say there's too much dust on the car? This is a Hawaiian land and they don't like to put anything non-sacred on this land. Yeah. So they don't want mud dropping from other parts of the island. Yeah. So they're trying to get it off the truck, but the guy is not being very friendly, they said, to say the least. Yeah. I'm gonna try to wash it and then plan B will to give a car and there'll be a car that will pass Yeah, us. there will be a, for sure a car and the car will get, gladly bring the supply to us, I'm sure. I think so. Let's only do what's necessary. So what's happening, Gab? Uh, there was a mean ranger and he won't, don't want us to go up to the top and he was really mean to me and Dan and disrespectful, but now we have to clean the car unless we won't see the guys finishing. I feel so bad with, for Charles. I want to cry actually, like I know how important it is for him. And I know he must be so, so sad, so pissed right now. And so like, what the fuck? And they have like enough to think about right now. Like, we need water for the yeah. bird shit. For the bird shit? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. Drop my camera and catch it mid there. <laughs> Man, the view's here, insane. We're still going, we're hoping that they're gonna give some supplies, hoping they can clean the car. Yeah, we had to do an emergency car wash, but we're making it happen. We're gonna have to put it in the washer, but it's definitely working. It's like, it's not perfect, it looks but it's pretty good. It looks like, good. like, what about the bottom down here? Yeah, let's get that. Beautiful. Front wheel just slipped and I hit the deck pretty hard. Ah, fuck. Ah, that's good. Ah. You know, Charles crashed going uphill at four miles an hour and did a little damage on his elbow. Nothing bad but it could have been worse. And you're like, I was doing four miles an hour and I, you know, loose gravel, dirt gravel section on Mauna Kea was the worst. I, I've, I've done Mauna Kea 15 times and it's the worst it's ever been. So messed up and so loose. And normally I only walk a section, a small little section towards the top. And I think both Charles and I walked three sections. At some point I keep going, I'm out of water, I'm out of food, I just hope that our car will show up. I see your friends coming up with a clean pickup truck. The crew stopped, they gave me food, they gave me water. I was so stoked to see them because that meant that it would increase our chances of actually finishing this route. So uh, at that point, you guys missed it, but a corner over there was like, bang, and my front wheel slipped, felt oh. big. It's not, like, not too big of a crash, but hit pretty hard. Now it's, it's a bit numb, it hurt. Hopefully no, nothing is broken, but as of right now, I can still ride the bike, so time to catch up to Chris. Look at the view, man. Right, you guys should go, uh, we feel Chris. 
So we kept going, the, the, car, the crew goes to see Chris. Chris doesn't feel good at that point, he's really into his zone. Oh my God, you are excited to sore eyes. You want a bottle? A bottle? The guy just gave me some. I just need some moral fucking support. Woo! I got it. What I'm saying is this. What I'm feeling is this. I gotta get around this corner. It's fucking brutal. This next corner is so hard. The gravel part was diff more difficult this time because I don't think we had enough precipitation on the mountain to hard pack it. So every day the scientists that service all the telescopes are up and down pretty much 24 seven on three different shifts. So you have several cars going up and down, up and down, up and down, along with the visitors, along with everybody. Four wheel drive. So they just loosen the dirt, loosen the rock, and it just, it's, it's mush. If you get some heavy precipitation, it seems to pack it down. We didn't have any of that. It was all about really trying to stay focused, relax your, your, handle, your hands on your handlebars and ride in tire tracks, because that was the hardest you could get. Probably the last mile, the last 1.6k of this gravel part, I, I was just done. I was about to quit. I, I, my, my mind was not there anymore. Every time I was sliding, my rear wheel was sliding. And that happened every 10 seconds. And you guys have to keep in mind that we've been on the bike for like eight hours at that point. It's getting worse. I so lose man. Ah. And now the freaking headwind. But one step at a time, and I'll get there. I had some problem on flipping. Good thing my crew was there because starting off of by yourself in 20% loose gravel. It was impossible. If I get stopped here and when it's steep, yeah, I cannot. Where, so, do you want me to fix so, your back? So hold me like a, like a track stand. Okay. Right, then hold my hold my lower back. So flip it. And then I was just not able to get started on my bike. So good thing the crew was there. Moral support. I don't want to put too much pressure. So cute. <laughs> oh, I feel sad for him. When he was up there, he looked very sad. It's nice to have you guys here with me. You're doing great, man. Oh, we have Chris walking his bike. Oh. Yeah, that's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, the wind. Charles, yeah. He's okay. Nice. Good right there. Yeah. This is the part everybody walks. At some point, I, I catch up to Chris. I see Chris is walking, and right away, I, I started to walk. That was a good idea to save the watts. So I did what Chris is, uh, was recommending, and if Chris recommended was walking there, I walked. But I definitely think now, like I'm thinking about it, I, I, I could have biked it. So that will be for another another attempt. All right, feed me chips while I walk. Uh -huh. Oh, it feels good. I'm destroyed. Four mile march. I think the gravel car ends soon. Boom.
Boom! Yeah. Hey. Pavement! Pavement! Yeah. By the way, for the record, that's the shittiest I've ever seen that road. Oh yeah? It's fucked up, dude. No doubt, because it was a slippery. I've never walked those other sections. At some point, we finally reached the paved road, and I'm super excited, but Chris seems not that excited because what was coming up was even harder than the gravel part. All right, back on the road, back on pavement, and pavement never felt that good in my whole life. But Chris says there's a part that's coming that it will be worse than the gravel and we will zigzag our way up. How do you call that earlier? Paper boy. <laughs> when we left the gravel section and we started the last uh, four mile section of Mauna Kea Road, Charles and I were riding together. I knew my lower back was really bothering me and I was losing some power. So I just managed. I did try something different. The first two miles of the climb, I tried to stay straight and not paper boy at all because I have so many people ask me, what's the true grade of Mauna Kea? And I said, well, I don't really know because you paper boy it. So you can take a 23% grade and you can paper boy it down to about a 16% grade. And when we say paper boy, throw a paper, come on this side, throw a paper. So you're back and forth. But for the first two miles after the gravel section, I stayed straight. I never paperboyed one time just to see what the difference would be in my files. Uh, so everybody who's curious will now know what the gradient is of Mauna Kea. For the first time being on the mountain, I can actually think I see the top. The wind is blowing, legs feels good, but all I'm doing is concentrate on the breathing the solid month of Aerofit is pinging out right now. Just simulate the exercise I've done for the respiratory strength. In and out, in and out. And I try to get as much oxygen as I can. And sometimes like you just look up and you see the road is all the way there. You see that next air pin and that other air pin and it just keeps going and it keeps going. And at some point I turn around, Chris is not in sight. I just kept going my pace. I kept pushing, I kept going in zigzags, and then that's where the mind game started for me. This is our, I'm struggling right now. There's a lot to go. I can't, I can't believe it. I see the first observ 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 observatory tabarnak. But the end is there, I see the hand, I see. That's where I envisioning myself of finishing and that's where I started to recall my conversation with Tyler. If your, if your mindset state is in the there, right place, you'll, you'll finish, finish no matter what. what. If your, your mindset mental state there, is in the right place, you'll, you'll finish. finish. No, no matter, matter what. what. If the mindset's there, he'll finish. No matter what. If the mindset's there, he'll finish. No matter what. If the mindset's there, he'll finish. No matter what. If the mindset's there, he'll finish. No matter what. If the mindset's there, he'll finish. No matter what. Let's go, Charles. I got it. I fucking got it. Let's go. Let's fucking go. 
so after this really emotional moment with myself i regain so much power so much power i cannot even explain how strong i got after this part with myself i stopped that zigzag paperboard thing i started to go in a straight line started to push big watts i was there i was gonna finish it i was strong i was healthy i was well hydrated at some point the car gets here and i'm so stoked because i see the light i see the sunset i see the clouds under us and the motivation was through the roof i think so yeah oh my god no way he is demolishing the ride yeah very impressive where is he Julian, get in the trunk. Get me some beautiful shots. <laughs> Okay to go. We got my girlfriend cheering. Man, life's good. I live for a moment like that. Getting out of my comfort zone, going back home with lifetime memories. That's what cycling is all about. I had a, a little moment with myself earlier. I did cry, but I'm a man. And man cries. I'm feeling at, like at the end of my Everest. I got power for days. I got, I could keep going. All right, see the top. And that's, my friend, the end of the impossible route. So the question is, how impossible is the impossible route? Well, it's actually doable. Yes! yes!
you know, when you complete this, man, and, and uh, I beat my record by 58, 59 minutes. It's crazy, and for a 190-pound guy, the last eight miles of this is not conducive, you know, so I put in, I put in so much effort just to get up this damn thing, you know, and then we did it, we crushed it today. And uh, I hope we inspire a lot of people to come try this because 17,300 feet of climbing, <laughs> 10 hours and four minutes is just, you guys have to realize it's unbelievable. It's the hardest thing you, you can do on a bicycle, I think. Yeah. So come try it, please. <laughs> really, really hope this motivates people in. I mean, if, if you need a guy to do it with you, you know to hit, who to hit up. Now I'm slammed, and it's time to recover. Tomorrow we have a beautiful day at the beach, just chilling. You have reached the voice mailbox of... Adam Roberge, I'm not available at the moment. I'm probably out riding my bike. Thank you very much for calling. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hey Adam, this is Charles, so I got good news for you. We're both registered at uh, the Rift in Iceland next year in July. So I pitched this idea to a few sponsors, a videographer, a friend, and looks like I might be doing another movie. Do you want to be part of it? If you do, just let me know and we're going to make it happen. Alright, peace.